Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new edition, edition, well, I'll have to learn to speak English as well, of A Message of Hope. And today I have the pleasure to be with uh, Joe Fletcher, who is a trippy enthusiast and discoverer. Welcome, uh, Joe. Yeah, hello, welcome. Um, thank you. Well, thank you for agreeing to be uh, with us uh, today. And I'm going to ask you the, the question. And the question is, how does having this uh, understanding, uh, how does that help you to navigate um, stress events in your life or, or COVID whatever <laughs> shows up? So how does that help you? Okay. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, a little backstory also, I was diagnosed with ME chronic fatigue syndrome at nine, age nine. Um, so that kind of meant I missed all my secondary school. Um, I did go to school with children with disabilities for a while. Um, so that kind of caused a lot of anxiety in my life. And I did go to various kind of therapy, CBT, and that kind of, which helped me a bit, but it never really kind of, it was only ever temporary. And so it kind of would give me occasional relief. And so I kind of just got through my life and got through kind of university and college, but always that kind of lack of self-confidence, kind of lack of self-belief and that kind of voice of doubt in my mind all the time, which is really restrictive and kind of the anxiety and stress uh, just about general life. And, and so I kind of was just kind of going through, getting through, trying different therapies and someone suggested a book, which I read a couple of years ago and didn't connect to that much and then I bought um, tried it again at the beginning in the UK we had the lockdown in March and this time I just really connected with it and I saw how it talked about thought and how we create our reality and how we create all our conflicts and our troubles and kind of things that happen in our life and I just really saw in my own life how I was doing this to myself and so I kind of it just was so profound for me I just wanted to get into it more and more and then I happened to notice Sydney Banks name in it and so I thought I'll check him out on YouTube and it was the Hawaii lectures was the first one I watched. And it's just, I could just see so much then and I was just so getting it and all the time I was just seeing more and more. And I could really see then how like we're all innately healthy and we're all original, everybody has that mental health in them. And how he talked about, it doesn't matter if you're kind of in a psychiatric hospital or you're in prison or wherever you are or what's happened to you in your life, you still have that hope. And so that kind of really gave me this real hope that, I mean, because I've been told even that, um, that I'll never get better. That was kind of something a um, ME specialist once said to me. So I'd had that kind of like, well, for my life, I was just planning the rest of my life, kind of managing it and just doing the best I could really and keeping my fingers crossed that they would somehow discover a miracle cure for it. So I was always on that restriction and just that whole realization that everyone can go back to being, being that center of being healthy. And then, so it was just so much hope for me then. And then it was just that I could and then start to see more and more as I went along, like how, how like I would, from the inside, I would just create my perception of the world and then believe that was true. And that I would just get the thoughts come to me and then think that was what was happening and blame things on the outside that was causing it. And then as I just to start to see more and more that it was just, it was me creating it and it just kind of, it just really helped me. Just It just brought me up and up and up. And then I just kind of, it would just, just out of nowhere, would just have kind of a realization or kind of a, and I suddenly it would just come to me of something and it would just let me know what I'd been doing and then I'll just completely shift. And I just went from like kind of being kind of a shy guy who um, would talk to people if I was kind of one to one situations, but I was just so insecure of myself my whole life. Um, and I've I just kind of like restrict myself and I do things like when I was in kind of safety of home or close friends, but I've still always had that barrier on myself. And it all just fell away really it just like someone took a hammer and just smashed the wall down and it just completely shifted me entirely to this whole almost like a new person like i've been renewed and i've kind of been what they call reborn and it kind of just brought everything back and i just became so much happier so much more compassion and just i was able to speak and that person is maybe a bit speaking too much and a bit too i kind of had to bring it down a little bit but it was just kind of like I've been renewed really. And it, it was just amazing the way it happened. I mean, it's just reading it. I, I never had an agenda or looked for it. I just kept reading and just kept just relaxing when I read through it. And it was just, and I think it was The Enlightened Gardener was the first book. And I mean, I couldn't even say exactly what it was in it. And I just kind of, I first got that like, wow, this could change the world. Why doesn't everybody know it? And so then I just thought like, I could be this guy and I just thought I was gonna go around and change the world. and 
I just couldn't understand why everybody didn't know it in the world and why it wasn't just so widespread to everybody. And so I just kind of, and so that was kind of happening. And then I just, I mean, even Facebook and that before, I kind of just hated Facebook really and hated its whole ethos and just hardly used it. And then I just joined, um, I think it was Michael Neal's group. And then I just started connecting with people and the people had the same interests and I was just connecting with these people around the world. And it was just kind of, it became this whole global thing. And so for me, in some ways, the kind of lockdown has been a positive because I've just been able to, I, I, well, I've discovered all these things and I just don't believe I would have discovered it otherwise or wouldn't have discovered it when I was. And I mean, I just, it's it just been completely a chance to renew my life and give me this new hope that I never had before or ever thought was possible. I mean, especially kind of like the ME and that. And then I kind of met Dr. Pettit, uh, Bill Pettit. Mm -hmm. And then he even told me there's studies that prove that people have actually recovered from ME and just my energy has just gone up so much. I mean, it was just kind of before I would try and do things and I'll just become ill and I'll just become ill for like five, six weeks and that. And it's just out of nowhere, I've just suddenly got just this massive, massive energy boost. And like my, and I also, my mum would always say to me, that I was always like the, um, in the UK, we call it the glass half full. I don't know if they have that saying in the States. And she would always say to me, I was so glass half um, full all the time, so pessimistic. And that just fell away. It just went. And it was just, it was, and it's just, it's, like I say, it's like before where there would be barriers in, in the kind of view of driving a car and it just, someone puts up a barrier and it just restricts you. And, and it just kind of, it just fell away. And this is kind of, I mean, it's just, I've never known anything like this understanding to do that really. It's kind of, and I've tried so many other things that helped a little bit. And I mean, it, it's, it's kind of, It'll happen, it'll just happen when it happens as well. There's no timeline to it. There's no, you can't say, well, within eight months you'll be there or you'll be there in five years or you'll be there whenever. It's just kind of, you just have that awakening in yourself and it's, it just touches you and you, you can't even explain it really. It just, it's just something, just something you're reading it and it'll, I mean, and, and you'll come back to it as well and it'll make more sense or it'll just completely change and you think you're reading a new book or listening to a new thing. And, and then you can just connect with people in a whole new way and and you just just see people and it's um and you see the whole world really differently and you realize so much about events and the things that happen in the world that you just create yourself and then you portray that onto the world and you portray that onto people and you think people are behaving to you in a certain way and then you just learn that, that that's actually you creating that yourself and so you kind of see that how um you'll get into disputes with people or things will happen and then then when you kind of realize but you also realize it's not about controlling your thought it's not about changing it it's not about changing your mood it's it's just understanding what the thinking is and that it comes to you and that you don't have control of what the thoughts come but you don't have to hold on to them you don't have to keep running over them or you don't have to work out and i think very much that forgiveness as well and like forgiving what's happened in the past and i mean i've seen so much when i've come into the community how people have difficulties with that because they think it's like condoning the other person or letting the person off the hook. But, and I mean, I kind of, when I came into it, I kind of would see all these whole horrific crimes around the world. And I think, well, how can you forgive these crimes and how can you forgive these people? But I just come to realize that from what Sid was saying about, you just put yourself in a psychological prison. It has nothing to do with what anyone else did. It's just freeing yourself from this restriction of this hate for the other person, because you don't, you don't affect the other person. I mean, you probably never see that person again. They're just, exist somewhere else in the world and you kind of think well I'll punish them by thinking like this and you're just punishing yourself and so it's just so much about just releasing yourself just just realizing that you, you have the power that no one else has the power over you and, and I mean I can see why people don't like the thought of I mean I went through that kind of when I realized that kind of it was my own thinking that had even caused my ME and it was just that you start blaming yourself and you kind of think oh well I did this to myself but then we, we realize and that you did it in innocence because you didn't realize because nobody knows do they? i mean nobody knows it's your thinking that does it and you're just trying as hard as you can and everyone just tries the best and you just try you just do whatever you can to get through it when when you kind of think you've got this thinking and you've got this kind of turmoil just going round and round in your brain and you just get so kind of heavy in that and you just can't see any way out of it and so you kind of people will get into habits or people will get into ocd or people will get into addiction or just whatever they can and they're just doing what the best they know of how to get out of it and so they're completely innocent when they do it. And we kind of have to forgive ourselves, really, because we just didn't know, couldn't we? And we, you, you can't blame yourself for something you don't know what you're doing. And so, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, that's kind of the main thing. And it's just given me so much, like, 
realizing how that you can also that's just that guide in you that when you do kind of get into that quiet mind there is something it's, there behind you some something in the universe that pushes you to kind of like the the place where, where you kind of need to go bill pitted like yeah. what you said, to have compassion for herself bill pitted has this analogy probably you've heard it that yeah. um let's say you you go in a dark room no there's no light mm. and you bump into things and break things and all of a sudden the light comes on yeah and then you see and now that you see you don't bump into things you don't break things anymore so and there's no point of um, berating yourself because all the stuff that you broke because you didn't see but you can yeah. just be happy that now you see Definitely. And I think it was his when he said about you did the best at the time with what you knew exactly. or you was doing the best at the time with what you knew. And that was kind of a really big one for me. It was kind of everyone's just trying their best, really, just with what they've got, kind of the tools they have and what they have. And once they realise you don't have to believe your thoughts are just kind of neutral and everyone has thoughts and they just come and they go. And it's like it doesn't matter what the content of the thought is. There's nothing doesn't mean anything there's no meaning to like the thoughts you get it's not they don't they don't kind of define if you're a good person or if you're a bad person they just everyone gets different kinds of thoughts and it's just letting them go really not not Absolutely. analyzing them not kind of trying to put meaning onto them and we have sixty thousand to seventy thousand thoughts per day so some yeah, are good yeah. some are not so good some of are like out of this world and some no so we have no control and the only thing we can do is just let them through. Definitely. And I think the kind of big thing as well, I mean, with Dr. Pettit, because I've kind of worked with him as well, and it's the body alarm systems. And what he talks a lot about the alarm systems. And it's kind of, for me, I really realized now, you just notice the, I mean, he calls them love letters from God because he says they're sending you a message. And it, and I've just noticed that. And once you start to notice them and you kind of, you, you learn them and you become more sensitive to them and you you feel what they are i mean for me it's kind of a start getting like a kind of feeling in my head like an uncomfortable feeling and i might start tapping my hand or pacing around or kind of whispering to myself and it's just saying you're just getting out the kind of present you're getting too much into the thought you're buying into it too much getting too much stuck in your head and it's just kind of trying to nudge you a little nudge to try and bring you back and it'll just get louder and louder if you don't kind of if you ignore it i mean he kind of says like that child doesn't get shouting louder and louder and louder and it's like that it'll it'll tell you and it's not even trying to stop it it's very much just the noticing it but not noticing it in a trying way just kind of a relaxed just just saying oh it's there i can i can see it coming and i mean it's it's, it's easy to fall into a trap you know like kind of even when people meditate they'll fall into a trap i must meditate or i must do this and you try really hard and then you just create more blockages and so it's very much just just noticing it there just kind of going inside yourself gently and just noticing something coming and then it will just kind of dissipate itself. Exactly. Well, we don't put any more meaning to it. Yeah. Other than it's just signaling to you that you're kind of losing the present moment. You're kind of kind of speeding up too much, getting too fast. Kind of, you want to come back down to the speed of life, really. You know, just slow down very much for me that and you, you're noted with the feeling. I mean, it's distinct feeling. You kind of want you in that peaceful kind of relaxed i mean for me it's kind of like a nice just a nice peaceful warm feeling inside my kind of stomach and that it'll just feel nice and warm and just kind of feel almost like when sid said you pour out the wine it almost feels like i can kind of clear my channels are clear and that and just my mind's just not busy it's just kind of relaxed and a bit more serene a bit like the scene behind me peaceful and you know in the busy city with everyone rushing around and everything so it's um yeah it's just it's just about that just kind of relaxing really just trying to let it happen and just let the universe does what the universe does. We have no control, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Joe, for, for uh, your, you, yeah. uh, your time. I know you publish uh, beautiful poems. And if uh, people want to find you or find those beautiful poems, uh, where can they find you? I think it's Joe Baseman thirty five uh, dot medium dot com. I'll just double check to make sure that definitely comes up right.
Well, we'll we'll, we'll get that after after the recording. So yeah, sure. Once again, thank you, Joe, for your time. Yeah, that's the right address. Yeah, that's the right address. So it's Joe Bass. So it's J O E B A W S um, M A N uh, dot medium. Oh, sorry, thirty five. So it's Joe J O E B A W S uh, M A N thirty five. Just as a um, the uh, numbers dot medium dot com. Thank you. Thank you.